Hello all. Hi, performance psychology. It is Tuesday and currently we are listening to an artist from here in Colorado named Nina Story. I'm super excited because this Friday Nina is actually putting on a concert for me and my friends. Um, she's doing a private concert. She's a performing artist and of course right now these artists aren't able to share their craft with people because they um, can't go to clubs and perform. So Nina is doing a private concert for myself and a few of my friends and I'm super stoked that I get to be a part of that. So looking forward to this week for me um, doing things like little things like that that are making this a lot easier to get through this quarantine. Hope you guys can find something if you happen to be interested in joining our concert, let me know. I would be happy to have you. It's going to be a Zoom concert. She's going to be performing live, taking requests, and um, should be super cool. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. This is quarantine week five. I have moved the inspirations uh, memes up here so you're not having to dig so deep for them anymore. Uh, never was planned to have this much stuff on our Schoology, and lo and behold, that's just how things work, so we're adjusting with it. Uh, quarantine week five. Uh, this week, we have inspirational memes to respond to, uh, to Blake's and to Karen's inspirational memes by Friday at 11.59. Make sure you're doing that. We also have a couple of new quotes of the week um, for this week, uh, so thanks to Kellen and Kylie. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. We have also, and Schoology has been acting a little weird, um, this is actually the end of our strategies lesson. On Thursday, we have a class get together. Hopefully you've gotten that invite to join our Google Meet. If you haven't, let me know and I can resend you that invite if it's gotten lost in your email. I ask that you take a survey uh, for your participation points this week. Um, but with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and start up our strategies lecture for today. And this is it. This is our final strategies lecture for this unit. We'll be doing a couple other things in this unit, and then we'll be moving on into leadership, um, which is our final unit for the semester. Um, so I'm going to go to our very last slide because we've gone through all of these strategies. And that's what today's lecture is about, is the culmination of this all. What does it mean? I've presented presented to you guys a bunch of different strategies. And of course, you're not going to use all of these strategies at once. As I said in an earlier lecture, you want to add maybe a strategy into your practice, maybe one or two, um, and master those strategies, then maybe add another strategy. But all of this is done to kind of get us in a routine. Routine is key for any performer. And so today we're going to talk about establishing a pre-competition routine, or what I will refer to sometimes as a PCR, just a lot easier than saying a pre-competition routine. I'll ask athletes, you know, how is your PCR going? And they understand that I'm talking about their pre-competition routine, the routine that gets them into the mindset before their competition. This may be a routine that actually starts the night before. I know many competitors want to make sure that the day before, that maybe during a practice, they're doing something like a pregame practice, uh, that meal the night before a big game um, may be very important to them. Going to bed that night and getting themselves in the mindset even before they go to sleep. So these are all things that we would group into what we call a pre-competition routine. Let's go ahead and watch a quick video about the importance of pre-competition routines. In terms of one thing we found looking at elite athletes, and I think once kids get past 12 or 13 and they've learned how to train and they're getting a little more serious in their sport, is how do they, they hook their head on for performance? How do they mentally prepare? The research is pretty clear. More successful athletes tend to have uh, pre-game routines where they warm up the same way, they may think about the same things, the same kind of thoughts. And what's ironic about that, it's very individual. One athlete may visualize and close their eyes and imagine they're out there. 
and another athlete in the same sport may find telling jokes and being distracted till 90 seconds before he goes out is what works for him. But what the research is very clear, once athletes have been around a while, they develop these routines. And when they stick to their routine, they tend to do better. When they deviate, they tend to have less good performance. In fact, we found that in our studies of Olympic athletes. The key is in a good example, I'll tell athletes, the biggest game of the year, how should you psych up? My, my answer is the same way you've been psyching up all year long, follow the same routine because that's what works. Okay, so that video is from the Positive Coaching Alliance, which they're really big in sports psychology right now because they're getting information out to the masses. Sports psychology is such a new area of psychology in terms of the constant um, influx of information that's coming in of what is working and what isn't. And so Positive Coaching Alliance is an alliance that is kind of working with coaches in trying to help their athletes and their teams get better. Um, and this idea of a pre-competition routine isn't something that's just, you know, an idea. It's proven. As he said in there, um, in that video, um, you don't want to change anything up. I don't care if this is the biggest game of your season or if this is for a state title. You're doing the exact same thing that you did in game number three of your entire season. So this is really important that an athlete think about their PCR um, before a season even really starts. If you don't have a PCR and you're in the middle of a season, then starting it as soon as possible. But you may not have the results um, that you would like to have by the end of the season with that PCR. Because remember, a lot of these strat strategies have to be practiced in order for them to effectively work. Just like you're going to need to practice your free throws or your penalty kicks in order for them to be successful in a game. Okay. So today we're going to talk about how do you write a pre-competition routine? And I'm going to refer you to this article. Um, I have included this link in our Schoology class for those of you watching this, um, this lecture and don't have access to that Schoology, if you just type in pre-competition routine helps athletic performance, you should be able to pick it up. This one happens to be um, on a parent's parenting site. So they talk to you almost like as if you were a parent, what would you do for your child to help them establish a pre-competition routine? Um, basically, the article talks about how you should work backwards. You want to work about start off with what are you doing five minutes before your competition? Then what are you doing a half an hour before? What are you doing um, on the uh, drive to the competition? What are you doing the night before? So you can see this is just an example of somebody and what they need to be doing. So like, for instance, the night before, if all possible, have them uh, have your child check their backpack. So if it may be for you, it's pack my running shoes, double check that I have uh, two pairs of socks, you know, things like that. And those are great. These are the logistics that you need to have. If you look at the arrival time, have your child warm up, um, have them check their equipment, things like that. Do they have their race number on? That's all great. But what this pre-competition routine doesn't show you is the mental strategies that need to go into this pre-competition routine. So you guys did a worksheet about what strategies do you want to try? What strategies are you already doing? You want to make sure to include your mental strategies in this pre-competition routine. So that night when you go to sleep, okay, Maybe I'm not just going to sleep at a good hour, go to sleep by 10. But maybe what I do is as I'm going to sleep, maybe I picture myself running a 400. Okay, and I'm going to use that visualization. So I want to ha put that strategy into my pre-competition routine. Where does that fit? Maybe when it says right here, right before the competition, I've got my headphones on, I'm listening to my music, my playlist, and maybe I'm power posing, okay? So in addition to the logistics of how you're gonna stretch, what are you gonna pack in your bag? I want you to make sure you have your mental strategies in that PCR. 
So that is your assignment for this week. Um, it is the big assignment for this week. It has a due date of next Tuesday at 1159. And what you're going to do, I don't have a specific worksheet for you. You're just going to come up with your own pre-competition routine. Maybe you make it a grid. Maybe you make it, um, you know, where it's got times. However you choose to do it, that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to dictate that. What I am going to dictate, though, is that you do include some mental strategies. Now, don't overload it with all 10 mental strategies that we talked about. That's ridiculous. Then you start just becoming anxious about your mental strategies, okay? Don't overload it. The other thing to keep in mind is superstitions. We're going to talk about superstitions and how they're exactly just that. They're superstitions, how they can be good, but they can be bad. Because if you don't do a certain superstition, your anxiety is going to increase because you feel like you're so dependent, your performance is so dependent on that superstition. So that's the same thing with strategies. Don't overload yourself with strategies. Two, three, max, maybe four, especially if you're doing some the night before. But you don't want to get yourself so anxious because you forgot to do that strategy. And now I'm going to have a horrible performance. OK, so you do want to include those mental strategies, but don't overload yourself. Um, I'd love for you to guys think about the night prior or the morning of that competition, maybe starting your PCR as early as that. And then, of course, the day of the competition. What are you doing an hour before the competition? Things like that. Keep in mind, it needs to be realistic. If your coach doesn't want you listening to music in the stands 30 minutes before the game, you got to keep that in mind. Make this as realistic as possible. This is not a paragraph paper. This is a timeline for you to get down your pre-competition routine. Now, of course, you're not going to know if this PCR works for you right away. You may have to do it two, three times. You may find that you're switching some things up here and there, and that's fine. OK, maybe you decide, you know, this one really didn't work. It doesn't fit within the timing of things. That's fine. But having a good outline for yourself is key because there again, we go back to the little um, illustration that I chose for this week. And consistency is key when it comes to PCRs. All right, guys. Well, that is it. I'm going to let. Uh, I'm going to let my favorite artist, uh, Nina, take us on out here. And I'm not even sure if this is the same song or not. Um, but, <laughs> guys, I hope you have a wonderful, right wonderful um, week. We are meeting on Thursday, so hopefully check that for that email. And, um, yeah, have a great week, guys. Check you later.